morning and welcome back and happy 4th of July weekend. I know a lot of people out and about. Do you have any grilling plans? Uh, no, I, it's too hot. It's too hot. Because, <laughs> you know, we're here in the mornings, and by the right. time we get home, it's like, what, 11 noon? And Sarah, by that time, it's it's over. It's done. Yeah. It's over. The day is done. <laughs> we're already in the 90s by noon when we get done with work. And, you know, today is going to be another day where we're going to be close to that century mark. We got there yesterday. And so that tallies up 23 100 degree days through May, June, and the start of July. We've still got the rest of July, the rest of August. August and even some of September to go. And so where do we stand? Well, we're just about 18 days away from hitting the top three years with 100 degree weather. And again, we've still got a long way to go until the end of uh, summertime. And unfortunately, look at this forecast. We're probably going to add on to that triple digit tally over the next couple of days and even into early next weekend. Here's the thing. Our average high this time of year is 94. So we're going to be hotter than average by some five to eight degrees outside right now. We We've got some early morning clouds as we've been talking about. It is very humid outside. It's 78 degrees, but look at those dew points in the mid 70s. We are very humid. It already feels like it's 81 degrees out there. South southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. So elsewhere, we've got wake up temperature of 80, 79 rather in New Braunfels, 83 in Del Rio, 74 in Kerrville, 80 in Catula, 78 in Victoria and 76 in Beeville. Now, a few backyards will get lucky today because there's a swirl in the upper levels of the atmosphere showing you the water vapor here. You can see the counterclockwise movement of the atmosphere higher up and that is that low pressure system. That's going to be giving us a 20% chance for an isolated thunder shower today. So let me take you through the future cast. Most of the day is going to be quiet, but between about 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. we're going to see a few isolated showers and and uh, perhaps even a rumble of thunder or two thunder showers out there today. So if you get rain, consider yourself lucky. There is a 20% chance through San Antonio and the metro area to see an isolated shower or storm. Now, a lot of people are going to be out and about. And even though you may dodge a shower or two this afternoon, the big thing you're going to have to keep an eye on is how hot it's going to be today. It'll be 99 in New Braunfels, 98 in Seguin, 96 in Canyon Lake, a couple of degrees cooler up in the hill country, 100 degrees in San Antonio and near 100 elsewhere across the metro area. So in your KSAT 12 hour forecast, it's mostly cloudy outside right now. We're going to see partly cloudy skies by 10, 83 degrees by 10. And then as we head into the afternoon, that's when that heat is going to really crank up 90 degrees at noon winds from the south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour in the afternoon. And it's at 4 p.m. that we start to introduce that 20% chance for an isolated shower shower or storm. It'll be 100 degrees 5 6 p.m. with that chance for isolated showers and storms continuing through uh, just past sunset. The other little stickler in the forecast today is that it's going to stay humid all day long. Dew points will come down a little bit in the afternoon, but because of that, it's going to feel anywhere from 101 to 100 and even up to 7 degrees out near Carrizo Springs in Catula. So it is going to be oppressively hot and humid today. You're going to want to make sure to stay hydrated. I'll be your weather uh, weather mom today telling you what to do. Stay hydrated, stay inside if you can, but if you're going to be outside, Make sure to find some shade now in the uh, rainfall potential across the nation. Quite a bit of rain is possible across the Great Lakes and even the Carolinas because of actually a tropical storm right now and coming up the next half hour. We're going to talk about the tropics, but notice that there's a big hole over the central plains. Yep, our good friend that heat high going to be moving on overhead again in the coming days. And that's why we see our rain chances pretty much go out the door. Triple digit weather becoming more and more likely over the coming days as well as those rain chances exit the forecast. So all in all, it is going to be hot, humid. You'll get lucky if you see some rain today. So keep your fingers crossed if you want a little rain in your backyard. But here's the thing, I'll be showing you the tropics coming up in the next half hour and, and we'll talk about the potential for development in the Gulf of Mexico if there's any relief there for us in our future. Thanks, Sarah. Mm.
It's just a lot of triple digits. Yeah, I was in New York last week, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed their hot, which is like 90 degrees. Oh. <laughs> Very spoiled. Welcome, Welcome back, back to Texas. Yeah. Hey. Time now, just about 618, 78 degrees out. All right, straight ahead in the middle of all these flight cancellations and rebooking issues, what it would take for you to give up your airplane seat and as people are boarding, apparently a Delta ticket crew found out. We'll tell you what it took later in this half hour. How much would it take you? If you were at the airport ready to go, what would the number be? Is this like for money or for like? Yeah, it's for money. Don't, oh. if you guess this right, I'm gonna be so upset. I would say like, what, five? Okay. Thousand dollars? Okay. I'm, I'm not that expensive. Okay, <laughs> well, we're gonna go over it. Meanwhile, we have a lot to go over when it comes to the Spurs. They're gonna look a lot different this year. We're gonna explain what happened, what comes next. We actually get to hear from one of the stars no longer a spur. Maybe I would take 2,000. I don't know. <laughs> or we can just win the lottery. Pick three, nine, two, five, fireball one, daily four, four, seven, eight, six, fireball four. Your cash five, nine, 11, 13, 25, 26. Did you play? I did, and my ticket is in my wallet. I need to go check. Okay. All right, Mega Millions, a big jackpot over 300 million. One, 27, 29, 38, 62, Mega Ball 12, Mega Player three. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So, as you know, the Spurs are going to look a lot different this year. Less than 24 hours after the Spurs confirmed that they traded DeJounte Murray to the Hawks, it hurts to even say, well, DeJounte was introduced in Atlanta just yesterday. In that blockbuster trade that was reported on Wednesday, official on Thursday, DJ and Jock Landell sent to the Hawks in exchange for three first round picks. The first one is next season. It is protected. There's going to be a swap of first round picks in 2026. That deal also comes with forward Danilo Gallinari. He's expected to get out of the contract and probably go to the Celtics, but neither here nor there. So what was DJ's reaction when he found out that he had actually been traded? Let's listen. I was smiling. There was a, a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, you know, like I said, San Antonio, you know, took a chance on me. They they helped me out tremendously. Uh, you know, like I said, a family forever. And it was hard talking to Coach Pop, you know, with this situation. But on the other end, uh, what made it easier, like I said, was them wanting the best for DeJounte Murray and, and you know, just how hard I work. And I'm a winner and I want to win. So, you know, uh, I was excited. There is the Spurs meet. So Max was upset that DeJounte left, but DeJounte was delighted to be paired with two-time NBA All-Star Trey Young. He's about to start his fifth season in the NBA. And here's another guy we got to say goodbye to, Lonnie Walker, headed to L.A. He said goodbye to San Antonio on Twitter yesterday, making his feelings known on social media. He agreed to that one-year, $6.5 million deal with the Lakers. The Spurs, remember, withdrew with a qualifying offer. Lonnie said in part, quote, thank you to the city of San Antonio, truly welcoming me into the city with such open arms. So now that both DJ and Lonnie are gone, the face of the Spurs franchise, well, I would say we have three faces, but one of the big ones, one of the bigger guys, literally and metaphorically, Keldon Johnson. He's about to start just his fourth season in silver and black. So what happens next season with the arguably youngest team in the, franchi in the franchise history? You know, we come in, we're going to fight. We're going to play hard. We're going we gonna to go out there and compete. We're going to win. Um, I think uh, we got some great guys around here. I think that, uh, I mean, we definitely lost some big pieces, but I think we, we definitely got some great guys in, ready to work and ready to learn. And I, think, uh, I think everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. And it's not just Keldon. We got Josh Primo. He's super young on the come up. And, of course, Devin Vassell, who's going to have an explosive year. It's a hard breakup. It's not a breakup. <laughs> Time now. I wish everyone the best. Time now. 625, 78 degrees out. Okay. The <laughs> price it took for eight people to give up their seat on a plane that was preparing to take off. That story after the break. Good morning and welcome back. So, some scary news. Thousands of people receiving unemployment and workforce benefits. They had to wait for payments because an apparent cyber attack. Now, Geographic Solutions, a Florida-based IT provider, was forced to take some of the systems offline this week after it reported uh, weird activity on their computer network. Now, the outage delayed jobless benefit payouts for thousands of people in Tennessee and Nebraska. It also prevented people in Washington, D.C. from filing new paid family leave claims and 
and prevented some people from even conducting job searches. Geographic Solutions has not said whether ransomware was involved or whether and when it expects to recover. Here we go. A lot of us have been boarding planes. A lot of us have actually been at the gate when some of the counter agents, people working at the counter, they start offering deals, start offering vouchers so that someone will give up their seat if they've overbooked it. Okay, I'm so upset I was not on this <laughs> on this flight. So, well, this week, Delta Airlines reportedly offered something better than a voucher, just cash money. Mm. So, according to passengers on the flight, Delta offered, I'm just so surprised <laughs> by this, $10,000 for eight people to give up their seats on the plane. Multiple passengers on social media confirmed it, saying it all started at the gate with an opening bid of $5,000, but no one took the five? No one took the five. What's wrong with people? So people started boarding and there still weren't any takers, so Delta bumped up the offer to 7,500. Once passengers were on board the plane, a flight attendant announced they were still looking for volunteers. Okay, so here's probably what happened. They probably had someone who took five, then someone who took seven and a half, and they overbooked, so they probably needed people to leave, so they started offering $10,000 cash for each person who would leave. They still took, still took about 20 minutes before enough people decided to take the $10,000. I would have been like, I'm easy, to give me five. 5,000? Yeah. Yeah. Go home, rebook. Enjoy a coffee in the airport. Time now. Maybe a glass of wine, I don't know. Couple, couple glasses of wine, yeah. $10,000. <laughs> 630, 78 degrees out. All right. Changing gears, a murder suspect arrested and now a grieving mother said she can begin to heal. We hear from her next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 6.33 this morning. It is July 2nd. It was weird to say this morning when we said happy July because I feel like we've just it's, sprinted through the summer. Yeah, I mean, summer started like at the beginning of June. So. Well, here's the thing. Summer for us almost started in like May, Sarah, because we saw the 100 degree days. Yeah, it's been definitely an early start to the heat. So everybody is ready to enjoy this 4th of July weekend. Perhaps you're going to head down to the coast, Corpus Christi area, Port Aransas, Rockport. Here's your bay and beach forecast for this 4th of July weekend. As is usual, there could be one or two isolated showers or storms along the coast this time of year. But generally, it's going to be hot with temperatures in the low 90s. Bays are going to be pretty choppy and seas at three to five feet. Bathtub water, as usual in the summer months, water temperature at uh, 86, 89 degrees. It is going to be a nice 4th of July weekend there along the coast. Now, today here in San Antonio, we're going to be dealing with perhaps another triple digit day. We're forecasting 100 degrees for the high temperature today. It's going to be partly cloudy at 10, uh, mostly sunny at noon, 90 degrees, 100 for the high temperature. An isolated shower or thunder shower is possible. So what's ahead? What are we going to talk about? Well, hot today with a few pop up thunder showers. I'll show you the future cast tomorrow. Just plain old hot and humid. And then for 4th of July, we'll be grilling in the triple digits. So temperatures are going to be hot for the foreseeable future but we'll talk more about those isolated showers possible today and we'll take a check of the tropics. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, the Texas Supreme Court in a session late, late last night, they issued a ruling that again blocks clinics from performing abortions here in the Lone Star State. It's the latest court decision here in Texas following the U.S. Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah, and it's exactly the details everyone is trying to figure out and navigate through while everything is changing. Now, uh, just this week, Texas clinics uh, turning patients away rescheduling appointments and now potentially having to cancel those appointments altogether. Now here in Texas as well, abortion providers and patients and across the country trying to navigate this uh, ever-changing landscape of access to abortion and the changing abortion laws. Now we know earlier this week a Houston judge uh, reassured some clinics they could temporarily resume abortions up to six weeks into pregnancy. Well that was quickly followed by Texas Attorney General, uh, Texas Attorney General Ken 
Paxson asking the state's highest court, which is stocked with nine Republican justices, to temporarily put the order on hold. And now clinics in Texas had stopped performing abortions in the state of nearly 30 million people after the U.S. Supreme Court last week overturned Roe v. Wade and ended the constitutional right to abortion. Now we know a copy of Friday's order was issued or provided to Texas clinics by attorneys. It wasn't made immediately available on the website, but this is a story you can continue to follow on our website, ksat.com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also in local headlines, the investigation continues into that deadly train crash in Atascosa County. Two adults killed three minors in the hospital. So this crash between a train and a vehicle happened early yesterday morning. This is Strawberry City Road. It's near 281, just east of Poteet. Right now, we are still waiting to learn on the conditions of the three minors involved. We're still waiting to learn the identities of the two people killed. As soon as we get more information, we're going to update you on air and online at KSAT.com. Well, a man accused of killing an elementary school teacher has been indicted by a Bear County grand jury. Matthew Wessing is facing a murder charge for the death of 23-year-old Michael Echanis. The shooting happened back in March at an apartment complex on Gus Eckert. So police say Wessing allegedly shot Echanis several times. Relatives told police that he was taking a recent breakup poorly and that his ex-girlfriend was dating Echanis. If convicted, he could face five to 99 years in prison. 39-year-old well, Christopher Olivares killed nine months ago just while at his home. This morning's accused killer is behind bars and a grieving mother is a step closer to having some type of closure. John Paul Barajas speaks with Olivares' mother, who says she's relieved her son's alleged murderer is in custody. I had these chills in my body that ran down, and I, I started crying, and it was just like a miracle that a piece that they caught this person, and I cried. It was a moment Christopher Olivares' mother says she waited for desperately. Mary Quinado took us through the moment she learned police made an arrest in her son's murder, as well as what the last nine months have been like crying every day in, in the shower, trying to make myself strong, was suffering in me. Coronado says she watched live as 20-year-old Sebastian Hernandez was cuffed and put into the back of a police unit. Did you do this? That night. I never met for anything that I messed Did you kill Christopher? It just made me wonder you know to that? say, would give you the right to take some, my son's life away. According to police, Hernandez stabbed Olivares, stole his car, and set it on fire out in Guadalupe County. He was also seen on Olivares' doorbell camera before and again on the night of the murder. Hernandez's murder charge carries the possibility of a life sentence. The grieving mother explains having him behind bars brings her a little bit of peace, but it won't bring back what was taken from her. I'm glad he's caught, but why would you do that? That's why I know why did you brutally murder my son like that? John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Well, in the aftermath of that horrific human, human smuggling operation, the recent increase we've seen in crime locally and outspokenness in the aftermath of the Supreme Court case overturning Roe v. Wade, well, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar is set to join us live on Leading SA tomorrow. If you have any questions that you would like to ask specifically, you can post those questions right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for our full conversation. All right, we know there are so many events happening in and around the Alamo City this weekend. Happening today, the 10th Annual Armed Forces River Parade. Now we got to get a sneak peek at some of the barges that will be floating down the Riverwalk later this morning starting at 11 a.m. Spectators will see everything from the Bald Eagle to the Declaration of Independence, as well as tributes to each branch of the U.S. military. We have wives of the military that are that are represented because they sacrifice. And we also have a, a, a float of remembrance, which is actually the Visit San Antonio flight, float, um, to remember all of the military that have lost their lives. So the parade starts 11 a.m. You might want to get there early. Admission is free. If you have any questions, just head to KSAT.com. And we've been, you know, behind the scenes, and it is so cool to see some of those floats, all the hard work that goes into it, and obviously, you know, honoring men and women who have served our country. I love a good river parade. Yeah. Time now, 641, 78 degrees out. Okay, Gulf Coast Seafood Ooh. making a splash this morning on Texas Eats. I wonder this is where this is from. Okay, 
but we'll have that preview still ahead. I think it's a place in Corpus Christi. Okay. From town. All right, taking a live look at the Alamo City 78 now. What is the rest of the day? What about the long holiday weekend? How are we looking? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and happy 4th of July weekend. We know a lot of people are doing a lot of fun things. Are you doing any fun things? I'll be here. Woo, all the fun we With got. Max Massey. <laughs> Sarah, uh, Sarah Spivey, you doing anything fun? I'll be here too, but Woo! in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, that's okay because I live around downtown and those fireworks uh, go until like five o'clock in the morning. So I'll at least be able to sleep through that. I think I'm officially like old man status where I'm like, all right, we need to limit the fireworks after nine, nine o'clock. Good luck with that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. So uh, outside right now, we do have some clouds early this morning. It is just very humid outside. Uh, dew points are in the mid seventies. So that 78 already feels like 81 and we're going to have the heat and the humidity in combination today so wherever you're at you're going to know that it's hot outside. You're going to really feel that heat in a big way. Perhaps you're going to want to head out to the Comal Guadalupe rivers floating on the river. Here's your floating forecast for the day today. Uh, we'll be mostly sunny around noon, 90 degrees around noon. And in the afternoon, we do introduce a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm. It is going to be close to 100 and we'll see a few more clouds in the afternoon. So the UV index, in spite of those clouds, still very high skin damage time within about 20 minutes or so. So if you're going to be out grilling, if you're going to be out by a body of water, whether that be the pool or the river, know that that UV index is going to be pretty high. OK, across the state of Texas right now, it's generally quiet. There's some showers across East Texas with some tropical moisture out there. We do have a swirl in the mid levels of the atmosphere right across South Central Texas. This is why we've got that 20% chance for an isolated shower or thunder shower today. Few backyards will get lucky. For most of us, though, we are just going to be mostly sunny and hot. As we head into the afternoon hours, between about 4 till close to 10 p.m., we're going to have an isolated shower or two out and about. Don't pay very much attention to where this particular model puts the rain. That blob of showers could be anywhere across the metro area. And again, the time frame 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. when we lose the daytime heating, our rain chances will go away for the day. So if you get rain, you will be lucky because there's going to be very little rain chances in the future for us over the next seven to even 10 days. It's going to be hot today. High temperature of 100 forecasts in San Antonio. It'll be even hotter out west. 102 Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs. Mid 90s in the Hill Country, still hot. 95 degrees in Kerrville, 99 in New Braunfels and Seguin. But as I said, that humidity is going to stick with us throughout the day. These numbers will come down a bit. Right now, dew points are in the 70s. They'll come down into the 60s this afternoon, but that's still going to be muggy. And so forecast heat index Temperatures will be close to 100, but the heat index will feel hotter than that. It'll feel, feel anywhere from 101 to 104, even hotter southwest of San Antonio toward Laredo, generally feeling like 102 in San Antonio this afternoon. So here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. By 10, we'll be in the 80s. South winds today at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll see gusts of up to 20. It'll already be 90 by noon. We'll have mostly sunny skies for the early part of the afternoon, but as we head into the middle of the afternoon, We'll get a few puffy cumulus clouds. Some of those will produce some showers. So again, a 20% chance. That's it. Not a good chance, but the chances there will be close to 100 degrees this afternoon. For the rest of your 4th of July weekend, again, hot and humid today with a 20% chance for rain, 10% chance in the afternoon tomorrow, but 100 degrees on Sunday and 101 on Monday for 4th of July. If you're planning on enjoying some firework displays Monday night, temperatures will generally be in the 80s and 90s. So it's going to be a warm uh, night with mostly clear skies. All right, taking a quick check of the tropics. Tropical storm Bonnie expected to exit back out into the Pacific Ocean, strengthen as a hurricane. Meanwhile, overnight tonight, tropical storm Colin formed on the South Carolina coast. It's expected to maintain tropical storm strength and impact areas along the coastal Carolinas. So uh, not really here in San Antonio You're going to see any impacts. And in fact, no development in the Gulf is expected over the next five days. So we are just stuck with the hot and humid weather over the next few days. Keep your fingers crossed for that 20% chance today. If you want a little rain over the next seven days, because look at that nada in the forecast. It's just going to be hot. High temperatures climbing to 102 Thursday, Friday. All right. Well, 
That's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? I got nothing. Time now, 649, 78 degrees out. You can head down to the coast. Oh. Keep nice and cool that breeze. Ooh, it looks delicious. Serving up seafood from the uh, Gulf straight ahead. We have that preview of Texas Eats after the break. You do oysters? Uh, yes. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You can bring them in tomorrow. Taking a live look at, it, at the roadways. Not too much going on. Everyone, uh, calm and quiet you know, here oysters now. Oysters in the morning, it's really not. Well, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from, the, from the rafters, Sarah Spivey throwing an arrow. <laughs> Time now, 650, 78 degrees. We'll be right back. takes us to the Texas coast, Corpus Christi, my hometown, to try some fresh seafood and spirits. All right, so headed to Corpus Christi. Let's see if we can get this preview. I got to do it. I got to do an oyster, though. I mean, we're in Corpus. We're near the Gulf. All right. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. If you want to start out your meal right at the Blue Clove, you got to get a little bit of everything. And the starter dish that comes out with the oysters, the ceviche, the tuna, and a little bit of extra stuff, this is the way to go. Oysters Rockefeller, very classic dish. How are you guys preparing it out here? Uh, we uh, shuck them fresh to order. And uh, the Rockefeller, it's a uh, bacon, Parmesan cheese, a little bit of spinach, and a uh, cream sauce. Yeah. It's topped with the lemon butter sauce as well. I'm going to get one of these bad boys. You get one too. Cheers to you. Boom. If you want to try a starter that's not cold, I highly recommend the Rockefeller oysters. These things are absolutely delicious. They're buttery. They have a little piece of bacon that's on there as well. So they're a little smoky, little porky, salty, creamy, and delicious. That restaurant started off as a hole in the wall on the mm. city's west side. Uh, and these two brothers, they're just doing great things. My favorite restaurant. And now they're, now they're a big restaurant in Corpus getting the recognition they deserve. So. If you're ever in Corpus, try them out. Blue Co. 10 a.m. Texas Eats. Right. You can go there. Just watch it right here on KSAT. Time now just about 6.55, 78 degrees out. We'll be right back. Coming up on GMA with the holiday travel weekend in full swing, we have the latest on those flight cancellations and delays and the millions hitting the roads to try to avoid them. What the Secretary of Transportation has to say and coming up, the travel tips to help you stay on schedule. Plus, an ABC exclusive, a life-saving rescue. One Florida teen is speaking out after a terrifying shark attack. More on her recovery and the warning to beachgoers this weekend about sharks heading to our coastlines. And how can you keep your 4th of July barbecue on a budget this weekend? The simple swaps at the supermarket and what our sales experts want you to know about saving amid those inflation hikes. It's all here ahead on GMA. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. The Texas Supreme Court blocking a lower court order that says Texas clinics could continue abortions. An order by a Houston judge earlier this week had reassured some clinics they could temporarily resume abortions up to six weeks into pregnancy. That was quickly followed by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton asking the state's highest court, which is stocked with nine Republican justices, to temporarily put the order on hold. Now, clinics in Texas had stopped performing abortions in the state of nearly 30 million people after the U.S. Supreme Court last week overturned Roe v. Wade and ended the constitutional right to abortion. Now, a copy of Friday night's orders was provided to Texas clinics by attorneys, but it wasn't made immediately available on its website. This is a story that you can continue to read and follow on our website, KSAT.com. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 83 at 10, 90 at noon, 100 for the high temperature this afternoon. There is a small chance, 20% for a few showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. In general, though, it is just going to be a, a sizzling 4th of Oof. July weekend. We'll be at 100 tomorrow, 101 on Monday for the 4th of July. And then looking ahead into the future, look at all those triple digits on that forecast. Isn't it just gorgeous? Oh, my gosh. I'm being so sarcastic. Great. Something. Hey, at least we got a little rain last week because, sure. again, it's going to be dry. Right. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, coming up at 8 a.m., Jonathan Cole will be live with the people of the Fiesta Noche del Rio. We'll see you back here at a.m. Live from KSAT 12. 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Big news this morning, the Texas Supreme Court making a big decision overnight regarding abortions here in the Lone Star State. We're going to explain the ruling coming up. And the Bear County Sheriff's Office is talking more about the investigation into possible smuggling incident on the city's southwest side yesterday that ended in a misunderstanding. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Don't let this fool you. It is hot and humid out there. Only says 79 now, but what is the rest of the day? What does the rest of the holiday weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Saturday. It is July 2nd, and it feels like all of July in one morning. It's pretty much always July here <laughs> in the summer. But before we get to weather, we wanted to talk about um, a big event happening because, mm -hmm. of course, we are military city, and it it wouldn't be what it is today without our brave men and women in the military. So today, San Antonio is honoring them with the Armed Forces River Parade along the San Antonio Riverwalk. It starts at 11 this morning at the International Center at 203 South St. Mary's. It will last about 40 minutes. So we have all this information, including the complete parade route right now. Just head to KSAT.com. So Sarah Spivey, we know a lot of people out and about. It's one of my favorite river parades in San Antonio. What can people expect? Yeah, well, here's the forecast for the Armed Forces River Parade. It is going to be hot. It is going to be sunny. Uh, kicks off at 11 a.m. Temperatures are going to be in the upper 80s. Around noon, it'll be 93 degrees. And if you're walking out and about around downtown San Antonio afterwards, just know it is going to be hot. Temperatures are going to climb into the low Low 90s this afternoon, eventually topping off near 100 degrees later on today, closer to dinner time. Outside right now, we are starting to see these morning clouds break up. It's mostly cloudy and 79 degrees at the airport. Winds are from the south at 10 miles per hour, but humidity is high, so it already feels like it's 82 degrees outside. Elsewhere, it's 73 in Bernie, 75 in Bandera, 79 in Canyon Lake, 76 in Seguin, 80 already in New Braunfels, and 81 in Castroville. So today, there is is going to be a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm coming up in the forecast. I'll show you the future cast again. Not everybody is going to see rain today, but a few lucky uh, folks will get some rain in their backyards. Uh, only a 20% chance though. Otherwise, after today's brief rain chance, it is going to be hot for the remainder of the weekend to 100 on Sunday and for 4th of July, 101 in the forecast right now. Showing you that future cast coming up in just a bit. Max Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office has released a mugshot of a deputy facing charges for suspicion of driving while intoxicating and evading arrest. This is 32 year old Ernesto Garza was arrested yesterday morning. San Antonio police say around 2 a.m. Garza was driving 20 miles per hour above the speed limit on I-10 West near Vance Jackson. They say he was also changing lanes improperly and failed to maintain a single lane. An officer tried to pull him over, but they say he continued driving to I-35 North and near New Braunfels, where he ran a red light and stopped shortly after. Also new this morning, San Antonio police tell us one man dead after allegedly trying to run across I-35 on the southwest side overnight. This is what we know right now. It happened near the intersection of West Ainsley around 1030 last night. Police on the scene saying the man in his 50s was running across the northbound lanes at 35. That's when he was hit by the vehicle. The driver did stop, try to help out. However, police say the man who was hit was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say that driver will not be charged, but the northbound lanes of 35, they were shut down for a few hours overnight while officers investigated. So what appeared to be a tragedy turned out to be a false alarm. Bear County constables received a call of people jumping out of an 18 wheeler at the Winston Square Apartments just before five yesterday. Investigators confirmed 14 immigrants were hired to clean out an apartment. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says the group has legal status, lives in Bear County, and is, comprom is comprised of paid workers. Now, according to the sheriff, this was just a misunderstanding and says people are on edge following that recent migrant tragedy. I'd rather have a, a bit of, it be a false alarm and check it out than not check it out and find out somebody died after the fact. The sheriff is still encouraging people to say something if you see something. 
Big news this morning, your morning headlines. Late last night, the Texas Supreme Court blocking a lower court's order that said clinics could continue performing abortions in the state. Now that ruling coming just days after some doctors had resumed seeing patients following the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade. The ACLU saying the order for now does not allow criminal enforcement of a virtual abortion ban in the state of Texas. However, it does clear the way for civil enforcement. It was not immediately clear if Texas clinics that had resumed seeing patients this week would stop services once again. A hearing is scheduled again for later this month. Now, earlier this week, an order by a Houston judge had reassured some of the clinics that they could temporarily resume abortions for up to six weeks into pregnancy. However, that was quickly followed by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton asking the state's highest court to temporarily put the order on hold. Texas has technically left an abortion ban on the books for the past 50 years while Roe was in place. Well, happening today, obviously we know the big military armed services parade happening, but the Riverwalk attraction, one of the year, Fiesta Noche del Rio, back at the Arneson River Theater. It's really a really cool performance. It's, celebrated, it's celebrating its 65th season, and performances will be every Friday and Saturday until August 6th. Our Jonathan Goto joining us live this morning. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Well, we are here live at the Arneson River Theater where uh, Fiesta Noche del Rio celebrating, as you mentioned, its 65th season. It's been happening since 1957. Katie, talk to us a little bit about what's going to be taking place here today and how great it feels to be carrying on this tradition. This is just such an amazing opportunity. Fiesta Noche del Rio for 65 years has been carrying on the cultural legacy of, of San Antonio's arts districts. And so every Friday and Saturday night, we're presenting flamenco, folklorico, salsa, bachata, uh, country western dancing to to bring literally an hour and a half of fiesta into everybody's lives so now katie these aren't only just cultural and beautiful performances put on for the public but it's a fundraiser this is for a good cause yes this is the alamo kiwanis's largest fundraiser and so every every proceed goes to the different children's charities here in san antonio and bear county and after covid they desperately need this help now, Katie, let's give a shout out to those who woke up early to be here on stage this morning. This beautiful ballet folklorico that you see on your TV screen. And of course, mariachi, gallo de oro. I'm so happy that you guys are here today this morning. So we'll be hearing a lot of music from them coming up uh, this morning and also watching some of the performances that have been taking place over um, the past several weekends, right? Yes, we opened uh, June 10th. And so this is our fourth weekend, but we're so excited. This is um, the 4th of July weekend. And so we always do a little bit of a, a special, different, we throw a few patriotic things in the show um, to celebrate to celebrate that. So Now, Katie, uh, the first performance is going to be taking place at what time tonight? It's 8.30 tonight. Um, um, and it's 8.30 every Friday and Saturday through August 6th. And lastly, if anyone's interested in getting tickets, where do they need to go? FiestaNocheSA.com. Thank you so much, Thank Katie. You. So in the next half hour, we're going to be watching them perform and listening to the beautiful mariachi music, Mariachi Gallos de Oro. Back to you in the studio. Okay, Jonathan, can't wait to hear from those mariachis and see the folklorical dancers do their thing. I think last year he danced. I, Yes. So. So. Just Maybe saying. Jonathan Goto will be dancing. 8.30, we'll see. <laughs> Time now, 8.08, 79 degrees out. Okay, lots of people looking to celebrate with some fireworks this weekend. We have the latest on which areas have canceled fireworks displays this year. I have a super hot take, no pun intended. Okay. You ready? Ready. I'm not in fireworks, I think. Not a what? I said I'm not in fireworks. I'm going to do the fireworks. Oh, I'm shocked. <laughs> I thought you were just a firework, firework kind of guy. You know, I did get burned by a sparkler very early on in life. Maybe it's burned me. Oh my. Time now, 809, 79 degrees out. We'll be back with your burning forecast. Good morning and welcome back. So, obviously, a big holiday weekend. Ooh, we there's know fireworks a lot of me. people <laughs> expecting fireworks, but several areas are actually banning fireworks, canceling their displays, and that's because of these terrible drought conditions. Yeah, Sarah Spivey's been talking about those awful drought conditions. So fireworks shows in Fair Oaks Ranch, Fredericksburg, and Bernie, they've all been canceled. Bernie prohibits personal fireworks within the city limits and outside of Kendall County. Like Bear County and numerous other counties have temporarily prohibited the use of certain kinds of fireworks, namely skyrockets with sticks and missiles with fins. Bernie City officials say if you do set off fireworks, 
be ready by having a bucket of water ready. All right, so there are some fireworks displays still happening in and around our area. We have a full list right now. Just head to ksat.com. Do you guys plan on doing any of the fireworks displays going out? No. Nope. I, will I mean, we, we, we I'll be asleep if we're near, gonna be I think all of us live near enough downtown yeah. where we just kind of look outside and it's like, there. Oh. It's true, it happens. But you were mentioning how bad the drought is and I just wanna remind everyone, here's a look at the drought monitor. Uh, the worst possible drought, exceptional drought, is all across the Hill Country, Comfort, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Bandera, out toward Medina Lake, and it extends into Bear County. Elsewhere, though, extreme, severe to extreme drought is the norm, so makes sense that some areas are canceling their firework displays. Now, yesterday we reached 100 degrees, so that was the 23rd 100 degree day we've seen so far this year in May, June, and for the 1st of July, we've still got August and September to go and all of July to go. And so we're going to come close to being in the top three years with triple digit days. Uh, we've got about 18 more to go before we get to 2013, uh, where we saw uh, 41 days of triple digit weather. And here's a look at the forecast over the next few days. We're going to be close to 100 degrees every single day, if not hotter than 100 degrees. Our average high temperature this time of year is 94. So we're going to be about five to eight degrees above that. Outside right now, we are starting to see these morning clouds clear. It's 79 degrees, south winds at 10 miles per hour. It feels very humid outside. Dew points are in the 70s. It feels like it's 82. Elsewhere, 81 increase of spring in Catula, 79 in Pleasanton, 80 in New Braunfels, 79 in Gonzales, 76 in Kerrville, and 83 in Del Rio. We do have an off chance for a few showers and thunder showers this afternoon. Look to the south of San Antonio. Do you see that swirl in the atmosphere as we look at the water vapor imagery? That's a low pressure system that could provide just enough lift for a few isolated showers and storms. So while most of us will not see any rain today, as we head into the later afternoon and early evening hours, it's likely that one or two isolated showers and even thunder showers will develop around the metro area. Now it's impossible because of the random nature to know exactly where they'll pop up, but the chance widespread is about 20%. That's it. Only 20% chance for an isolated shower. If you get a ra some rain in your backyard, consider yourself lucky. Otherwise, it's going to be hot. 98 in Seguin, 99 in Converse, 99 in New Braunfels, 100 in San Antonio, mid 90s in the hill country near Bernie, 100 in Sabinal and 100 in Yavaldi. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for 90s by noon. We'll be in the 90s in the afternoon and it's after 4 p.m. that will introduce that 20% chance for an isolated shower storm. High temperature of 100, winds will be breezy from the south 10 to 15, gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. Another thing to consider is that it's gonna stay humid today. So dew points in the upper 60s, you're going to feel it. It'll feel like 101 to 104 with the high humidity, even up to 107 southwest of San Antonio. No good rainfall in our future, unfortunately for us. Most of the rain will be well east of Texas. Heat high going to be settling over. Coming up, we'll talk about the tropics. There's a couple of, there's overnight a tropical storm developed. I'll tell you which areas of the nation that will affect. Otherwise, it is going to be hot. We're stuck in a rut. Triple digit weather for us, Max and Sarah. Be careful out there, especially if you're going to be shooting off fireworks. Hopefully you're doing it legally. Yes. Keyword there. Time now, 816, 79 degrees out. All right, still ahead, reducing your risk of al Alzheimer's may be as easy as just changing your diet. We'll explain coming up. And we're going to have a look at what's next for the Spurs. There's going to be a new look Spurs. We know we had a lot of deals, not only with the Spurs, but a lot of deals across the league. A lot of new look teams. Shouts to Sixers and Embiid in that photo. But we're going to explain what you need to know, and we might hear from Keldon Johnson. Who knows? Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go! All right, so that was kind of an indication of how the Spurs offseason's gone. Less than 24 hours after the Spurs confirming trading to Shantae Murray, it's hard to say. He's now the Hawks, and he was actually introduced in Atlanta just yesterday. So in the blockbuster trade that was initially reported on Wednesday, made official on Thursday, DJ and Jock Landell sent to Atlanta in exchange for three first-round picks. The first one, 
Next season, it is protected. There's also going to be a swap of first round picks in 26. That deal coming with forward Danilo Gallinari. He's expected to be waived out of the contract and probably signing with the Celtics. So back to DJ. He's done so much for San Antonio. So what was his reaction when he found out he was getting traded? I was smiling. There was a, a lot of mixed emotions. Uh, you know, like I said, San Antonio, you know, took a chance on me. They they helped me out tremendously. Uh, you know, like I said, a family forever. And it was hard talking to Coach Pop, you know, with this situation. But on the other end, uh, what made it easier, like I said, was them wanting the best for DeJounte Murray and, and you know, just how hard I work. And I'm a winner and I want to win. So, you know, uh, I was excited. There is the like nothing but respect for DeJounte and speaking about himself in third person. He delighted to be paired with two-time NBA All-Star Trey Young. He actually talked about it in the press conference saying that they've been close. They were kind of close in high school, even though DJ is a little bit older and their relationship has only gotten stronger and should only get stronger as they continue to work together. As for another spur on the move, or former spur, should I say, one of my personal favorites, fan favorite, Lonnie Walker, saying goodbye to San Antonio, made his feelings known on social media after agreeing to a one-year, $6.5 million deal with the Los Angeles Lakers. Lonnie saying in part, thank you to the city of San Antonio, truly welcoming, welcoming me into the city with such open arms. And Lonnie and DJ will obviously be missed. Both of them did we'll so guys. much to the community. I remember Lonnie walking around downtown, handing out water bottles. And it was, uh, yeah, best of luck to both of them. Is Lonnie from LA? Yeah, no. I don't know. We don't know? No. Okay, well, we wish you guys best of luck. Time now, 822, 79 degrees out. Well, could the right diet actually help mm. you reduce your risk for Alzheimer's? Find out what the latest research is saying. Well, Alzheimer's is the leading cause of dementia and can have a devastating impact on both patients and their loved ones. But what if, and this is a hypothetical, what if you could lower your risk of getting Alzheimer's by just eating the right foods? More than 6 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's, a disease that robs people of memory and the ability to perform everyday tasks. But now, researchers are finding that what you eat may have a direct impact on your risk for developing this disease. If you eat the right diet, you can reduce that risk. Scientists are finding that a person's gut health may actually influence the risk of Alzheimer's. In a recent study, rats with gut bacteria from people with Alzheimer's performed worse on memory tests and they even had higher levels of inflammation in the brain. This suggests that gut health and brain health may be connected. The people who eat the right diet has the more good bugs propagated in their gut. One diet that's received recent attention is called the MIND diet. It's actually a combination of the popular Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet. Early studies show it actually lowers Alzheimer's risk by 53% in those who follow it closely and 35% in those who follow it loosely. The MIND diet promotes 10 food groups, green leafy veggies, other vegetables, nuts, berries, beans, whole grain, fish, poultry, olive oil, and wine in moderation. Wine. All right, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's good. It's, it's good stuff. So the mind diet limits things like red meat, butter, margarine, and of course, fast food, but no processed food in there. Right. It, the thing is, if you eat healthier, you're automatically less likely to get any disease. Yes. Gut health is very important. Oh. I saw wine in there, which I was like, but in moderation. Moderation. I specifically, because I knew you were going to point that out. Wine. <laughs> moderation. <laughs> Time now, 827, 79 degrees out. All right, still ahead on GMSA, the latest on another attempted human smuggling incident, this one on the south side of San Antonio in the city of Dilly. And of course, it is Independence Day weekend. Lots and lots of celebrations. We have barbecues. We also have fireworks. Oh, but look at the barbecue. We're going to check out some of the best barbecue in and around Texas. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 8.31 this morning. It is July 2nd. That means we are just two days away from Independence Day. That's right. It's Independence Day weekend in downtown San Antonio, and the barges are ready for this morning's 10th annual Armed Forces River Parade. KSAT got a preview of some of these barges that you're looking at. They'll be floating along the Riverwalk starting at 11 this morning. Spectators will see 
everything from the bald eagle to the Declaration of Independence, as well as honors for each branch of the U.S. military. We have wives of the military that are that are represented because they sacrifice. And we also have a, a, a float of remembrance, which is actually the Visit San Antonio flight, float, um, to remember all of the military that have lost their lives. So the parade starts 11 a.m. Admission is free, but you're probably going to get there early. We have all this information, including the complete parade route right now. Just head to KSAT.com. So Sarah, at 11 a.m., is it still going to be unbearably hot? Like what? Big hat. <laughs> SPF, lots of water. It'll be 88 at 11. Okay. But as you head into the afternoon, temperatures are going to be in the 90s and we'll probably top off near 100 degrees today. So yeah, it's going to be hot, but you know, every July 4th here pretty much is, is hot in San Antonio. If you're heading to the coast, and a lot of people are, here's your bay and beach forecast for areas like Corpus Christi, Rockport, Port Aransas. It's going to be in the low 90s, but a course nearly 100% humidity out there and that water temperature is just warm. It is a bathtub at 86, 89 degrees. And by the way, bays should be choppy and seas at about three to five feet. Uh, it is going to be a nice 4th of July weekend for us, but it is going to be hot. Temperatures today will be close to 100 in the afternoon. And keep in mind that there is a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm. Uh, so we are going to be seeing those temperatures close to 100, not only today, but also tomorrow. Today, though, a few pop up thunder showers are possible. I'll show you the future cast here in a bit. And tomorrow, just plain old hot. Very little to no chance for rain. And on 4th of July, triple digits for us. Grilling in the triple digits. Coming up, I'll show you that future cast and we'll also take a check of the tropics. Overnight, a tropical storm did develop. I'll show you which areas of the nation that's going to be impacting this 4th of July weekend coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, happening today, of course, the Armed Services Parade, like we just talked about. But also, the Riverwalk Attraction of the Year is also happening. The Fiesta Noche del Rio is back at the Artisan River Theater. It's celebrating its 65th season. Jonathan Cotto joining us live. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. Yes, the sights and sounds tonight at the Arneson River Theater is going to be lit. You don't want to miss out. And as promised, we have El Ballet Florclorico, who's going to be performing here briefly. Katie, what? What are they going to be performing? They're going to be doing La Negra, which is one of our keystone dances. It uh, features Mariachi Scaios de Oro and, of course, the iconic um, Jalisco dresses that everybody knows and loves here in San Antonio. All righty. Let's, let's take a listen and let's watch. And there you have it. And if you want to watch more performances like this, where do we have to go? Uh, FiestaNocheSA.com for tickets and information. There you have it, folks. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, new this morning, law enforcement in Dilly, south of San Antonio, say 13 undocumented migrants found an attempted human smuggling situation. Now, Dilly police said around 4 p.m. yesterday during a traffic stop, they found the people in a rare rear cargo area. Now, police say several tried to run away. All of them eventually caught, turned over to Border Protection Agency. Now, the driver of the vehicle taken into custody. Dilly police say the migrants were overheated. They were thankful for law enforcement for stopping the truck and providing medical care. Meanwhile, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has now positively identified six of the 53 migrants who died after being left in an abandoned tractor trailer on the city's southwest side earlier this week. So 48 of the people died on the scene. Five more died in local hospitals. Officials say the process of identifying the victims, it's taken longer because they're from foreign countries. 42 other victims have what 
Officials say are potential identifications, but they are waiting for confirmation from their respective consulates. Five remain unidentified at this time. According to Mexican officials, the truck was carrying 67 migrants who traveled from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. And so in the aftermath of this horrific human smuggling operation, the aftermath of what we've seen in the increase in local crime and an outspokenness in the aftermath of the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar is set to join us live on Leading SA tomorrow morning. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can post those questions right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. for our full conversation. Well, the Department of Justice's review of the law enforcement response during the Uvalde school massacre is now underway. In an official statement from the Department of Justice, investigators say visiting the scene of the crime is just one piece of their comprehensive review. The goal is to provide an independent look at the response and identify the best practices to help first responders in future situations. Now, this week, members of the critical incident review team visited Robb Elementary for the first time. Remember, that is where 19 students and two teachers were shot and killed. In your morning headlines, the Biden administration has released its proposed five-year plan for offshore oil and gas drilling leases, sales in the federal water. So the plan would mainly limit drilling to the Gulf of Mexico, where most drilling is already happening. It comes as the administration is caught between political pressure over high gas prices and its commitment to reduce fossil fuel greenhouse gas emissions. The plan also follows the Supreme Court ruling, which says that the Clean Air Act doesn't give the EPA broad authority to regulate greenhouse gas emissions from power plants. Scientists, environmental activists, and the Biden administration oppose this ruling. The five-year drilling plan does not rule out new offshore drilling. All right, so this 4th of July weekend is predicted to set a road trip record. AAA is saying more Americans will hit the road than ever before. And as CNN's Meredith Wood reports, if you're flying, expect busy and packed airports. Prices are sizzling hot at the gas pump and soaring for air travel. But those high costs aren't expected to keep Americans home this July 4th holiday weekend. Prices have gone kind of through the roof, but we're still looking at travel numbers that will be approaching where they were in 2019. AAA predicts 42 million Americans will take a road trip of 50 miles or more. That's more than ever. And despite gas prices hitting a record in June. And if you're traveling by plane this Independence Day weekend, skies will also be a frenzy. AAA predicting 3.55 million people will travel by air. Still, that's only 7% of expected weekend travelers. That's the lowest share since 2011, when the economy was still rebuilding from the Great Recession. AAA says the lowest average airfare is about 14% more expensive this year compared to 2021 and getting ready for potentially long wait times at the airport. If you're traveling for the 4th of July, expect things to be chaotic and try to hedge your bets. Travel experts from Scott's Cheap Flights say it's a sign of a busy, chaotic, expensive summer travel season. There are fewer planes in the sky. You know, security lines are stretched both at home and abroad, and folks are really struggling to serve everyone equally. <laughs> And it's not just travel that's more expensive. Your July 4th barbecue may also cost you more this year. That's according to an annual survey from the American Farm Bureau Federation, which found the average cost is up 17% this year. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Meredith Wood. Time now, 840, 80 degrees out. Lots of barbecuing going on oh. this weekend. And so this week on Texas Eats, we're heading to Castle Hills to find out why their barbecue, ooh, look at that, is so good. We need all the brisket. Yes. You know, we're going to be here for 4th of July. We might have to grill in the backyard. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. <laughs> Time now, 841, 80 degrees out. Good morning, welcome back, and happy holiday weekend. So it is July 2nd. Uh -huh. Have you have you made plans for the fourth yet? Yeah, you got I'm the sparklers out and everything? No, I'll be here. I <laughs> think K I think KSAT would frown upon us if we brought sparklers into the studio. Probably. I would t I would say no. There's no. <laughs>
I would be the Scrooge. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but hey, you know, it is going to be hot and dry this weekend. There is an off chance for a few showers today. So if you're lucky, if you keep your fingers crossed, you may just see some rain in your backyard later on this afternoon. Although outside right now it is 79 degrees and it feels like it's in the low 80s because of the high humidity out there. A lot of people are going to be finding some relief near a body of water. Perhaps the Comal and Guadalupe rivers floating on the river. Just know that it is going to be uh, warm and mostly sunny and hot. Even by noon, it'll be 90 degrees. By the afternoon, 100 degrees forecast for the high. It is in the afternoon that we introduce a 20% chance for rain and there will be a few more puffy cumulus clouds out there this afternoon. So the UV index though is still very high skin damage time within less than 20 minutes or so across the state of Texas. Quite a bit of rain across East Texas right now, but it's generally dry elsewhere. We've got a trough of low pressure moving right over South Central Texas, and this is going to have enough lift to fire off a couple couple of showers and storms this afternoon. Chance for rain is only 20% in San Antonio and around the metro area. As you can see on our high res future cast, it does bubble up some isolated showers and storms between the hours of about 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. After we lose that daytime heating, uh, we will really, really will see our rain chances diminish. Otherwise, it's going to be hot 100 degrees for the high temperature uh, in San Antonio, 99 in New Braunfels and in Hondo a few degrees quote unquote cooler in the hill country, but still hot at 95 in Kerrville and 102 in Del Rio. It is going to stay humid today. Dew points are not going to go down all that much right now. Dew points are at the top of the scale. They're oppressive in the 70s. By this afternoon, dew points will still be in the 60s, so it's still going to be muggy when the temperature is close to 100, so it's going to feel like it's above 100 outside. It'll feel anywhere like from 101 to 104, even hotter southwest toward Laredo this afternoon. It is going to be a hot day today, so we know what it's like outside. We're South Central Texans. Make sure to stay hydrated. Try to stay in the shade if you can. There is going to be a breeze from the south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll already be at 90 by noon and then uh, in the 90s in the afternoon hours. We will see a few more cumulus clouds this afternoon as the that rain chance goes up to about 20%. That's it, 100 degrees for the high temperature. And this entire 4th of July weekend is going to be close to 100. Today we've got that chance for isolated rain. Tomorrow rain chances go down even more, only 10% chance, 100 for the high tomorrow. And for the 4th, 101 degrees for the high temperature on Monday and Monday night for any firework displays that are legal. We'll be looking at uh, temperatures in the 80s and 90s, so it is going to be a warm uh, evening with mostly clear skies. Let's take a quick check of the tropics. We do have Tropical Storm Bonnie, which is impacting Nicaragua right now. It's expected to head out into the Pacific and strengthen as a hurricane. But in the overnight hours, Tropical Storm Colin developed off of the coast of the Carolinas. It is expected to impact the coast of North Carolina throughout most of this weekend before heading out into the Atlantic. It is barely a tropical storm right now with winds of 40 miles per hour. Unfortunately, in the Gulf where we can see some rain chances, no development is expected over the next five days. And so we're going to be stuck in a weather pattern where each day temperatures will be near 100 degrees, even hotter. We're going to add on to that triple digit tally for sure by this time next weekend. Max and Sarah. Ooh, I hope I get some of that 20 percent. <laughs> rain today. <laughs> Time now, 848, 80 degrees out. All right, up next. Yes. Speaking about 4th of July, Texas, we like to do barbecue. I'd like you to do the rest of the newscast <laughs> with Texas, that. Texas, barbecue, you. Texas Eats, coming up, giving you a preview. You like that? That was good. <laughs> Let's take a preview of the roadways. Not many people out and about here in San Antonio. We know it's a big weekend for traveling. So if you are out and about on the road, if you're headed to the airport, make sure to, first off, show up early. Two hours, Sarah Costa. What? When you go to the airport, two hours. I My did, role. I did it. Proud of you. He was upset because I showed up really late. <laughs> <laughs> he was worried. Taking a look at the lotto. If you win the lotto, though, you can probably fly, fly private. I would, and I would. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> Pick three, nine, two, five. Fireball one, daily four, four, seven, eight, six. Fireball four. All right, cash five, nine, 11, 12, 25, 26. I didn't win, but apparently some people in Texas won at what, $25,000, our producer was saying. So one, 27, 29, 38, 62. Mega Ball 12, Mega Player, Mega Player 3. Good luck. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. It is Saturday. That means we have a great episode of Texas Seeds coming up at 10 a.m. David Elder is taking us to Castle Hills to enjoy some delicious, authentic Texas barbecue. But talk to me about the brisket. What kind of steps go into preparing it? Okay, so for the brisket, we, uh, we start in the morning, we trim them up, uh, we season them with uh, salt, pepper, and Jason Dady's Bro Rub. Uh, nice mixture of like 16 different seasonings that we, uh, we throw on wow. there. Rub it on real good, throw it on the pit, and let it smoke. But you want to be able to pick it up and then it's holding up on its own weight, but you pull on it and look at that, falls right apart. Pass the brick, the brisket test yeah. is what we like to call it, right? You want to eat your brisket? <laughs> Get another piece for I'm me. I'm not going to slow down. Yeah, you're this not stuff's gonna... good. You can't stop me. Here you go. Cheers mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's a nice bite, man. Thank you. Give me some love. The smoke ring on the outside of the brisket is really nice and it gives you that subtle smoke flavor that you want. It has a nice bark on the outside, nice and tender. Pass the brisket test, you pull on it, came right apart. Great flavor. Hey Max, you asked me what is my go-to order? What's your go-to order? You gotta go brisket. Brisket? It's, it's always brisket and then sides, coleslaw. Coleslaw, potato salad for me. Okay. And sometimes I'll like make a little sandwich out of it too. Just kind of like mix it all together. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to... Burnt two, ends. Yeah, mm. Two Brothers It's one of my favorite places. I, I love it. And you get yeah. like, I, when my dad visits, we get like the Two Brothers meal and we make like sandwiches of all the things. Super good. My mouth is watering, that's a problem. <laughs> Found now 854, 80 degrees out. Taking a look outside with the roads, we know it's gonna be a busy travel weekend for the 4th of July long weekend. If any incidents pop up, we'll let you know. Good morning, welcome back. So are you looking to clean up the yard, but you need some of the best top tools around? Well, San Antonio's Community Shed might be able to help. They have lawn mowers, leaf blowers, and other things that you need to keep the lawn tip-top shape. So how can you borrow an item? We have a link right now. Just head to ksat.com. We actually have a form that you can fill out. I didn't know about that. I was about to say, do you use it for the garden? Yeah, I mean, I have a lot, but there's always, I'm always knocking on neighbor's doors. Hey, can I borrow this? Can I borrow that? Love it. Time now, 8.57, 80 degrees out. All right, the Bear County Sheriff's Office now has a new addition to its emergency equipment. We're taking a look at the agency's new rescue boat. Big news overnight. Big news coming from the Texas State Supreme Court on abortions. We're gonna have the latest on the decision and what could come next in regards to abortions here in the Lone Star State. That story coming up. Well, celebrations for the 4th of July normally include fireworks, but this year the weather has put a damper on some area plans or more of the drought. What you need to know about all, several fireworks bans. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, it is already 80 degrees out. We know there is so much happening in and around the Alamo City today and through the weekend. So what is the weather going to look like? Is it going to be okay for the, the river parade? That's the big question of the day. Yeah, we have our armed forces mm -hmm. parade happening in just two hours at 11 a.m. at the river. Two hours. Yeah, it is 9 o'clock. Oh, my yeah, goodness. We're this at, morning it's is 9 flying by. Um, Sarah, so people heading out for that river parade, which Jonathan Cotto will have a preview of mm -hmm. in just a bit. Uh, okay, so. Sunscreen, sunscreen. water. Everything. Yeah, one of those big water jugs that you get at Academy filled with ice. <laughs> <laughs> the one that has the times on it, yes. telling you to keep going, keep drinking that you water. You can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Stay hydrated this I have weekend. one of those. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> yeah, I make fun of you for it. Sick burn, bro. Sounds like you're jealous. Uh, okay, so here's the deal. If you are planning on going out to the Armed Forces River Parade today, it is going to be hot and you're going to want to stay hydrated for sure. At 11 a.m., it'll be 88 degrees at noon, 90. In the afternoon getting hot temperatures will be in the low 90s here's the thing 
There's also a small chance for rain today. Small chance for rain today. It's 81 degrees outside, mostly cloudy, but here's the thing feels like 85 because of high humidity. We show you the satellite and the temperatures here. We've got some clouds early this morning. Generally, it's in the 80s already. It's fairly overcast out west toward Rio Medina, Hondo, Castroville, and even up toward Bandera. But we are seeing these morning clouds break up, and then we'll be off to the races for the heat. It's 82 in Castroville, 81 in San Antonio, 83 in New Braunfels, 83 in Pleasanton, and 79 in Canyon Lake. This 4th of July weekend, we are only going to see a 20% chance for isolated rain today. It's going to feel like 101 to 104, only a 10% chance tomorrow. And on 4th of July itself, 0% chance for rain. It's going to be 101 degrees. The reason why a lot of those firework displays have been canceled is not because of the chance for rain, but because it's going to be so dry and it is very dry out there with drought conditions. Coming up in the forecast, I'll show you the future cast where there's that 20% chance for isolated showers today. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man who tried to run across I-35 was hit and killed by a vehicle. This happened around 1030 on the northbound lanes of the interstate near West Ansley. Police say the man believed to be in his 50s was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of that vehicle that hit the man did stop to render aid. The northbound lanes were shut down for several hours as police cleared the scene. We're told the driver will not face charges. Also new this morning, late last night, the Texas Supreme Court blocking a lower court order, and that lower court order said that clinics could continue performing abortions here in Texas. Now, that ruling comes just days after some doctors had resumed seeing patients after the overturning of Roe v. Wade in the Supreme Court. The ACLU saying the order for now does not allow criminal enforcement of a virtual abortion ban in the state of Texas. However, it does clear the way for civil enforcement. It was not immediately clear if Texas clinics that had resumed seeing patients this week would stop services again. Another hearing is scheduled for later this month. Now, earlier this week, an order by a Houston judge it actually reassured some clinics that they could temporarily resume abortions for up to six weeks into pregnancy. However, that was clearly quickly followed by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton asking the state's highest court to temporarily put that order on hold. Texas had technically left an abortion ban on the books for the past 50 years while Roe was in place. It's the 4th of July weekend and a lot of people in and around San Antonio are going to celebrate, but some local and county leaders are worried popping fireworks could spark big trouble like fires because of uh, the drought. And as a precaution, areas like Fair Oaks Ranch, Fredericksburg and Bernie have all canceled their fireworks shows. Garrett Berger has more. Lighting up the July 4th sky, Bernie normally finds a way to make sure it's fireworks show happens. You could be right up front and you would actually feel the power of the fireworks kind of like rumbling through your body. But this year, the show won't go on. Obviously, there's no doubt how dry and hot it has been. The park where the show is typically held is right next to the Cibolo Nature Center. There's a lot of greenery out here, a lot of potentially flammable greenery. So really, the environment is just as it conducive to safely set off a lot of fireworks. An issue fireworks fans seem to get. And of course, my family and I would love to see the fireworks, but I think out of everyone's safety in Bernie, it's a good idea. Well, it's a little disappointing to think everybody could use something happy and cheerful happening, but I'm also concerned about the wildfires. So it's unlikely to be a quiet sky come Monday night. I guess everybody is still going to go get the fireworks on the side of I-10 because those stores are still open. Bernie prohibits personal fireworks within the city limits. Outside of it, Kendall County, like Bear and numerous other counties, has temporarily prohibited the use of certain kinds of fireworks, namely skyrockets with sticks and missiles with fins. And if you do set off fireworks, be ready to react to any inadvertent flame ups. Have water ready and available. Be prepared to stomp out any fire that might uh, quickly start up so that way you don't have to put our first responders at risk. In Bernie, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. All right, it is a special weekend, and in just a couple hours, we have the Armed Forces Parade. We have, I think, 19 floats, red, white, and blue, going up and down the Riverwalk. It's going to be exciting. It all starts at 11 this morning. Jonathan Cotto, he's there live at the Riverwalk. Jonathan, what do you have going on? 
So much is going on, and we're all here for it. I'm hanging out with my friend Katie. We, as we know, Fiesta Noche del Rio is going to be taking place tonight at 8.30. But, Katie, so much is happening today. We know it's a holiday weekend. The Armed Forces River Parade also kicking off at 11. Yeah, absolutely. And before that, they're going to have some of these great military bands performing for us. And then immediately after the parade, I think until 1 p.m. So it's going to be a day full of patriotism and military appreciation and, of course, Fiesta Noche del Rio at 8.30. Well, we can definitely feel the patriotism here at the Arneson River theater a lot of the decorations in the good old red white and blue the military band here are already setting up and getting ready for action yeah it's going to be it's such an interesting concert because um san antonio is such a big military city and so it's so nice that visit san antonio and the riverwalk association come together to really celebrate the, the men and women our armed forces also i think it's really cool that there's a river parade now for almost every holiday every holiday if you love whatever holiday you love they've got one for it um saint patrick's day mardi gras um, I know Pride just happened. They do one uh, for Day of the Dead. So it's it's San Antonio loves its river and we love our holidays. Now, Katie, one of the main reasons we're here for this morning, Fiesta Noche del Rio, it's more than just performances. It's, it's a benefit. It's benefiting children here in San Antonio. Yeah, all the money, all the proceeds go to the different children's charities here in San Antonio. And it's the tickets, the concessions, the merchandise, any donations you want to do goes directly to these, these children's charities that need it so badly right now. And that website again is? FiestaNocheSA.com. There you have it, folks. FiestaNocheSA.com. Get your tickets. Come out and better yet, enjoy this while helping others. Back to you in the studio. Awesome. So much happening down so at the Riverwalk much. today. I love it. The question is, can you beat the heat? Ooh. Time now, 908, 81 degrees. And if you do plan to go out, go do it now. What do we got going on here? Okay. I love this every year, never fails. The contestants for the hot dog eating contest in New York, they are gearing up. Excitement is building as the event makes its return since the pandemic. That's a lot of dogs. Yeah, all right, and BCSO now has its brand new rescue boat. We're gonna show the unveiling in just a bit. Already 81 degrees at 909 if you're heading out to that river parade at 11. Sarah Spivey says, be prepared. Pack some water. Maybe gallon. Hot. You gotta bring gallon. the gallon. Have ice in it. She'll have our Fourth of July weekend forecast when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Independence Day weekend. We know a lot of things going on in and around the city. We also know some fireworks displays were actually canceled. Yeah, because of the dry conditions, right? And all of that information is on KSAT.com. Now on our uh, KSAT Connect, we've actually got a sister station out in Houston, and this was the case out in Cyprus, which is closer to Houston. You can see a firework going off there, but look toward the bottom of your screen. You see all of the smoke. This is what happened uh, when those uh, fireworks went off is grass fire danger very high. Grass fire danger is very high here because of fireworks over the weekend. So please, please keep it to legal firework displays. We hit 100 degrees yesterday. That makes it 23 100 degree days in San Antonio. And uh, we're closing in to being a part of the top three years of triple digit weather. Why? Because we've still got all of July, August, and even September to get through. And we're going to add on to the triple digit tally in the coming days too. Just about every day forecast to be at or just above 100 degrees over the next seven days. Our average high this time of year is 94. We're going to be well above that. Outside right now, things are already heating up for us. It's 81 degrees, but it feels like 85 because of the high humidity. Dew points are in the 70s. Southeast winds right now at about 10 miles per hour. We're really not going to see humidity go down all that much today, so we will have a heat index value today. It's already 83 in New Braunfels, 83 in Gonzales and in Del Rio, 80 in Hondo, 80 in Uvalde, 79 in Kerrville, and 79 in Rock Springs. There is an off chance for an isolated shower or storm today, and the reason for that is you can see very clearly there's a counterclockwise 
swirl in the atmosphere right over south central Texas. That's a low and that may provide just enough lift for one or two, just a couple of isolated showers and potentially even an isolated thunder shower. You can see on the future cast here that it is a possibility after 4 p.m. to see one or two isolated showers or storms around the metro area. Otherwise, it is going to be hot. We'll be at 100 degrees today in San Antonio, mid 90s for the Hill Country, Bulverde to Kerrville to Bernie, 98 in Seguin, 99 in New Braunfels, 100 in Yavaldi, and 101 down in Pleasanton. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast will see these morning clouds clear through the early afternoon. It'll already be 90 by noon, and then in the afternoon, temperatures go up. We see temperatures in the 90s, and it's after 4 p.m. that we introduce that 20% chance for an isolated shower. We'll also see a few more cumulus clouds this afternoon, too, and we'll continue to see that chance for 20% chance for a shower or storm through about 10 p.m. Winds will be from the south today at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so a bit of a breeze. We're not going to see much of a drop off in the humidity. Dew points will only come down into the 60s, so it's still going to be humid this afternoon. So that 100 is going to feel more like 101 to 104 and even potentially hotter down toward uh, Catula and Laredo. It'll feel like 108 in those areas. So humidity stays elevated today. Heat index today want to stay hydrated as much as possible. And when we look at rainfall potential, Really, most of the rain over the next several days will be across the Great Lakes and areas uh, out across the northeast, but a big old hole across the central plains because of this heat high, which is going to be moving back in place and keeping us dry. Coming up, we're going to talk about the tropics because overnight tropical storm Colin did develop. I'll show you which areas of the nation that's impacting, but just know that for us, the big impact in the weather will be the heat and continuing to add on to the triple digit days in the forecast, Max and Sarah. Ooh, thank you, Sarah. <sighs> so many triple digits. Time now at 916, 81 degrees out. Well, the Bear County Sheriff's Office unveils its latest addition to its emergency equipment hardware that will now allow deputies to both operate on land and on water. We'll show you after the break. The Bear County emergency officials now have new capabilities to keep you and your family safe as you head out to the lake this weekend. All right, so the sheriff's office unveiling the brand new piece of equipment that will protect county residents for no cost. So Patty Santos shows us the agency's new rescue boat. Take a look. We're able to patrol every square inch of our county whether on land or on water, and we're happy, happy to have it. Bear County Sheriff deputies will have eyes on the water this weekend. This new rescue boat is the first of its kind for BCSO. Oh, from a first responder's perspective, you, we don't want to be sitting here on the shore helpless while somebody's sinking. Earlier this year, Sheriff Javier Salazar put out a call for help after county commissioners denied his funding request to buy a rescue boat. Business owner Javier Gomez answered the call. He donated his barely used 2006 vessel, estimated at about $20,000. Now that uh, we have no use for it, I mean, why have it? Might as well just give, give it, donate it to somebody that's going to put good use to it and then save lives. Local business donors chipped in several thousands more to the Bear County Sheriff's Foundation to equip the boat and pay for its maintenance. It comes at zero cost to Bear County taxpayers. The boat will be stored at Bear County ESD 10 and will be loaned to other emergency crews as needed. The county also unveiled a new $21,000 Zodiac boat for swift water rescues. Uh, the Zodiac can get into smaller spaces and perform, help perform those technical rescues. So shortly we'll be adding ESD 12 with their rescue boat as well and continue to enhance the services offered by the ESDs in Bear County. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Well, the sheriff says the boats will primarily be seen around Bronick and Calavatus Lakes. Time now, 921, 81 degrees out. Well, Disney announces it's transforming Splash Mountain at both of its parks into a Mardi Gras celebration. All the details of the major overhaul coming up. Disney's popular but controversial ride Splash Mountain is getting a complete overhaul. 
Disney confirmed Friday the decades-old log flume ride at both the Magic Kingdom in Florida and Disneyland in California will soon get a refresh. The new ride will be based on the animated film The Princess and the Frog, which features Disney's first black princess, Tiana. Details about the reimagined ride were announced Friday at a festival in New Orleans. Disney's Imagineers will transform Splash Mountain into a Mardi Gras celebration, and the new name will be Tiana's Bayou Adventure. The ride was originally based on the controversial Disney film Song of the South, which critics say portrays racial stereotypes. The grand opening for Tiana's Bio Adventure is set for late 2024. All right, this is the day, the weekend we have all been waiting for. Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest returning to Coney Island. Contestants include 14-time winner Joey Chestnut. He arrived at Hudson Yard for the official weigh-in ceremony just yesterday. Chestnut actually suffering from a foot injury. Whoa, how's that going to affect his eating ability? We'll see. He says he's planning to give it his all. And then six-time women's champion Mickey Sudo also back this year. Contest set for Monday at Nathan's flagship restaurant on Coney Island. So I think it said, did that say 76 hot dogs? Yes, I think that's the over-under too. I think that's what he got last year. So, Sarah, I ask you, how many do you think you get? Like, and how long? I think it's 10 minutes. Is it 10 minutes? Oh, like maybe three. What? <laughs> There's no way. Well, how many can you get, Max? I'm going to guess 30. I think I can knock down 30. I think we need to do it right here. On Monday. We're here working on Monday. Let's see if we can. Uh, oh, my God. Let's <laughs> do a contest. <laughs> There's Bobby. How many do you get? 10 minutes. Eight. Eight? Okay, that's fair. Yeah, no, I can't do that. <laughs> okay. 30 might have been a little All right, aggressive. we're going to have a contest. I'm a little, a little nervous. Maybe You're it's just I'm really hungry right now. Okay. That could be it. Time now, 927, 82 degrees out. All right, in the next half hour, GMSA, how to accomplish more during your day. We're sharing tips on how to boost your productivity. We could all use a little more productivity. All right, despite the warnings and the pleas, thousands of people going to the airport with their fingers crossed, hoping that their 4th of July plans weren't grounded. We have the latest on this weekend holiday travel across the country. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. It is 9.30 this morning. It is July 2nd. We know so many people out and about. We have the Armed Forces River Parade coming up in about an hour and a half. That's exciting, and you know, it's 4th of July weekend. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will be out grilling, uh, probably trying to pop fireworks. If you do so, please do it legally. Isn't that right, Sarah Spike? That's good advice, yes, because we are under extreme and exceptional drought conditions. Hey, we did just get the pollen count in. It's not great news. Molds have actually more than tripled in the last 24 hours. Molds are high, uh, like the last few days, all because of Tuesday and Monday's rain for us, but pigweed is low at 40 so molds are causing some issues out there it is the 4th of july weekend if you're planning on taking a trip down to the coast bays are going to be choppy seas about three to five feet water bathtub 86 to 9, 89 degrees and there will be an off chance for a stray shower too but generally temperatures in the low 90s back here in san antonio this is what we got for the day today mostly sunny 90 degrees at noon and 100 for the high temperature there is a chance 20 percent for an isolated shower or thunder shower and winds will be from the southeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about that off chance for a pop up thunder shower today. We'll show you the future cast tomorrow. Just plain old hot and humid with a high temperature near 100. And speaking of the triple digits, that's what we'll be at for the 4th of July grilling in the triple digits. We'll talk about all that and more, including the tropics in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, law enforcement in Dilly, south of San Antonio, say 13 undocumented migrants were found in an attempted human smuggling situation. Now, Dilly police say around 4 p.m. yesterday during a traffic stop, they found the people in the rear a cargo area. Police say several people tried to run away. They were all eventually caught, turned over to border protection agents. Now, the driver of the vehicle taken into custody. Dilly police says that the migrant migrants were actually overheated. They were thankful for law enforcement for stopping the truck and for providing medical care. Well, this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office has released a mugshot of a deputy facing charges for suspicion of driving while intoxicating and evading arrest. So take a look. This is 32 year old Ernesto Garza was arrested yesterday morning. San Antonio police say around 2 a.m. Garza was driving 20 miles over the speed limit on I-10 West near Vance Jackson. They say he was also changing lanes improperly and failed to maintain a single lane. 
An officer tried to pull Garza over, but they say he continued driving on I-35 North and New Braunfels, where he ran a red light and stopped shortly after. The Department of Justice's review of the law enforcement response during the Uvalde school massacre well, that review is now underway. So this week, members of the critical incident review team visited Robb Elementary for the first time. Remember, 19 students, two teachers shot and killed. According to a statement from the Department of Justice, officials say visiting the scene of the crime is just one piece of their comprehensive review. The goal of this review is to provide an independent look at the response and identify the best practices to help first responders in future situations. Once completed, the DOJ's findings will be made public. So we have a lot going on in and around San Antonio, and one of the most outspoken local leaders has been Sheriff Javier Salazar. He's been open and talking about the Supreme Court decision of overturning Roe v. Wade, talking about local crime, how to address it, and he's also been able to talk about the migrant situation, human smuggling situations, the deadly one specifically from last Monday. That is why tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., he's going to be joining us live. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, you can do so right now. Just submit your questions to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., for all the answers. Well, San Antonio City health inspectors have been busy this summer with pool inspections. 36 inspectors have been tasked with inspecting more than 1,800 pools across the city since the spring. That includes pools at HOAs, gyms, and hotels. And the annual inspections test for chlorine and pH levels is to ensure the water is safe for you to swim in. So inspectors say they are seeing a link between water quality and the economy. We have seen an increase of some people not being able to keep up with the demand of the pool. And we're getting, we've gotten several complaints about pools being green. Um, but when we go out there, we explain to them they have to keep up their water quality and then um, they do their best to keep it up for us. Well, inspectors expect a higher rate of calls following the holiday weekend. So if you have any concerns about the water quality of your community pool or hotel pool, you can report it by calling 311. All right, it's a special day. It's a special weekend for the Alamo City. Today, 11 a.m., we have the Armed Forces River Parade, one of the best parades in downtown San Antonio. we got like 19 barges, red, white, and blue, just floating down the river walk. It's exciting. It's happening in an hour and a half. Jonathan Cotto is there live. Jonathan, uh, also, you have a lot of other things happening down there. There's there's so much going on, Sarah, that it's if you don't have any plans, then you have to make your, your, your way out here tonight. Um, Maggie Thompson just made an appearance. We know that those barges, those floats are getting ready for this morning's parade. So make sure you don't miss out on that. But what we came for the Fiesta Noche de Rio, Katie. How exciting. We're super excited to be doing this tonight. It's such an incredible weekend to, to tailbone on the um, the back of the Armed Forces Parade and, and to just be the, the final of an incredible weekend. So come out and join us, 8.30 tonight, um, FiestaNocheSA.com for tickets. And we can't wait to see you guys. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. And this is all for a good cause, folks. So come and have a good time while supporting local charities. Right? Take it away. Max, uh, we're going to continue to party it up here at the Arneson River Theater. Reminder, you can get those tickets online. For more information, we're going to have a complete report in our later newscast. Make sure to head over to KSAT.com. Back to you in the studio, Max Sarah. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, if you're looking for traditional events for this weekend, we got fireworks, music, of course, grilling and food. Celebrating 4th of July, Independence Day. Plenty of places to go in and around the Alamo City tonight at 7 o'clock. Brook City Base, they're hosting their inaugural Independence Weekend at the Green Line. There's going to be hot dogs, face painting. We do the hot dog eating competition there, Sarah. Okay. 
I'm, I'm, I get my, my four hot dogs. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Both SeaWorld and Fiesta Texas lighting up the night sky with their fireworks displays tomorrow, Sunday, and of course, Monday evening. And on Monday, multiple Independence Day celebrations kicking off, including the return of the HEB 4th of July celebration at Woodlawn. We have a full list of this rundown, all the events, all the times. Just head to KSAT. Dot com. And so we know 4th of July weekend, one of the busiest for travel. So it starts off with a boom, especially at the airports across the United States. Travelers continue to experience canceled flights, thousands and thousands of delays. U.S. air travel is likely to set a pandemic era record at least once over this weekend. ABC News Christine Sloan has a story. This morning, millions of Americans traveling. AAA expecting 42 million people will be hitting the roads, driving in spite of high gas prices. The nationwide average, 484 per gallon, and in California, 627. One council member in Compton giving residents their $50 of free gas on Friday. Cars backed up for blocks for relief. It just means a lot to this community that, you know, is already having a hard time living check to check to, to supply, I mean, to, to get gas. Kayla Bogues and her family of five driving from Nashville, Tennessee to Destin, Florida. In addition to high prices, where are we? The traffic making some drivers reconsider hitting the streets on their next trip. Honestly, with all this traffic, next time we might have to contemplate flying. We've hit traffic again. In New York, drivers preparing for the worst. The Belt Parkway west to I-278 expected to be the nation's busiest spot. Get out early, but check your battery, your emission, your tires. Underinflated tires can cost you 5% in fuel economy. So you really want to be making sure that your car is roadworthy and know where the places you can get your car serviced along the way. Other travel tips, avoid extra stops. Pack everything you'll need before, like food and water. Use cruise control to increase gas mileage. Plan your route in advance and watch the weather for potential storms. Still, many people opting to save money and stay home. And the cost of the gas has just changed our plans completely. I regret going to the gas station every time I have to go. Minimum wage job and I work for gas. Now, if you are driving to avoid the mad crush, AAA says to leave before noon or after 7 p.m. tonight. Reporting from Los Angeles, Zoreen Shah, ABC News. So I'd just like to point out the gas in the background of Zoreen's 7.69 in L.A. That For regular. For regular. That is absurd. I know. Oh, my goodness. I'm upset about the, what is it, four, what is it, 4.58 right uh, now? 459? I was going to say like 4.60. Okay. 464. It's gone up. That's not great. Right. Oh, jeez. Time now, 940, 82 degrees. Laugh now, cry later. Hey, here's some good news. Okay. Just in time for lunch, we're talking burgers and beer at a popular spot in New Braunfels. We're taking you there in today's Texas Eats. All right, here's a big question. How productive are you at work? Of course, very productive. Of All course. my managers, I hope you're watching. After the break, <laughs> how to get more things done in a work day. Don't sit next to Max Massey and Sarah Spivey. I No, just it's because like we chat a lot. We're chatty. Mm -hmm. We're a chatty bunch. You know, we're fun. Not fun, <laughs> the weather. I will take 82 right now. But Sarah Spivey said it's going to heat up. She'll let you know how much. We'll come back. Well, this is kind of tragic. The average person will spend 90,000 hours at work over a lifetime. That's a lot. On average, it is about a third of the time you're alive. Right. Wow. So here's the question, though. When I hope you like working next to me, Max. When you're at work, how much do you actually get done? How productive are you really being at work? Obviously very productive. We're going in-depth. We're going to try to answer some of those questions. Take a look. More productive than anybody else in my office, I can tell you that. A recent study found the average office worker is productive for less than three hours a day. They're probably on the internet half the time. <laughs> to up your productivity, stop multitasking. Research suggests multitaskers are actually slower at completing tasks than non-multitaskers. Next, track and limit your time. Only 17% of people are able to accurately estimate the passage of time. A tool like Rescue Time can actually help track exactly how much time you spend on social media, emails, word processing, and other apps. Implement a two-minute rule. Finding and immediately completing tasks that take two minutes or less actually saves time and 
take care of the biggest tasks when they're the most alert. There's no set schedule that works for everybody. Another way to stay more productive, turn off your notifications. Instead, build in time to check emails and messages and just say no to meetings. The average office worker spends more than 31 hours every month in unproductive meetings. And if you absolutely have to go to a meeting, there's some evidence that standing can result in increased group involvement. Say no to meetings, Sarah. Yeah. Max is telling me to say no to meetings. No meetings. <laughs> but I can't, I just can't say no to the weather, guys. So outside right now, it's 82 degrees in San Antonio. We are seeing those early morning clouds really start to break up. But notice that it's 80 degrees in Hondo. Now in Medina County, we've had some pretty thick cloud cover, low level cloud cover, but it's fairly overcast in Hondo and Castroville. Now these clouds are, themselves are also going to break apart, but temperatures are on the rise. It's already 86 degrees in New Braunfels. And speaking of New Braunfels, if you're planning on doing a little floating on the Comal or Guadalupe rivers. It's going to get hot around noon 90 and then 100 for the afternoon high. We do introduce about a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm in the afternoon. And we are going to have a few more puffy cumulus clouds out there in the afternoon hours. But that being said, the UV index is still very high. Skin damage time within 20 minutes or less. We've got quite a bit of rain across East Texas and in Louisiana, but around San Antonio, it's quiet right now. Right above us in the mid levels of the atmosphere, we do have a low pressure system that may provide just enough lift to produce some isolated showers and storms this afternoon. That's why the chance for rain is about 20%. As we head into the future cast, you look at the, the afternoon hours after 4 p.m. That's when we could have one or two isolated pop up showers uh, around the San Antonio metro area. Not a great chance for rain, only 20%, but a great chance for the heat. It's going to be hot today. 100 degrees in San Antonio, 99 in New Braunfels, shaving off a few degrees in the Hill Country, but it'll still be 95 in Kerrville, uh, 93 in Rock Springs, but 102 in Del Rio and 103 Catula, 101 in Laredo. One thing that's not going to work in our favor today is that it's going to stay humid all day long. Dew points are in the 70s right now at the top of the scale. And instead of seeing dew points go down into the 50s this afternoon, dew points are only going to go down into the 60s. So it's going to stay muggy. So there will be a heat index value. It'll feel anywhere from 101 to 104, even hotter southwest of San Antonio. So you're going to feel every single degree today because of the high humidity. Looking into the rest of the morning and early afternoon, Afternoon, temperatures will start to rise into the 90s and as we head into the later afternoon mid to upper 90s after 4 p.m. That's when we're going to see that 20% chance for an isolated shower 100 degrees for the high temperature today forecast and even tonight it should stay fairly warm uh, temperatures in the 90s even as early as 9 p.m. Now for the rest of this weekend tomorrow there is going to be a stray shower out there in the afternoon hours but still a 100 degrees tomorrow and then for 4th of July itself Monday 101 degrees for the high temperature going to be a scorcher uh, on Monday for the 4th of July. Now oftentimes this time of year we look to the tropics for any rain. There's tropical storm Bonnie which is just off the coast right now of Nicaragua. It's expected to strengthen into a hurricane out in the Pacific not impacting the U.S. On the other hand tropical storm Colin formed overnight off of the coast of the Carolinas. It's a weak tropical storm, but it is going to bring a lot of rain for the coast of Carol North Carolina before heading out into the Atlantic and where we would need a storm to develop for rain. We don't expect any development in the Gulf of Mexico over the next five days. So instead that heat high is going to remain the dominant weather factor for us. We're going to be near 100 every single day over the next seven days with very little to no chance for rain. I'll show you another look at that pollen count coming up in a bit. Max, Sarah. Thank you, sir. All right, time now, 950, 83 degrees out. Well, David Elder taking us on a road trip to check out some unique burgers. A preview of today's episode of Texas Eats is next. Well, today on Texas Eats,
Eats right after our show starting in just a couple minutes. David Elder takes us up I-35 to New Braunfels. All right, so David giving us a look at, I hope I'm saying this right, and they're not two different things, Bloody Mary Burgers? Can't be bad. Okay, and of course, we got beer. Reuben Burger. Start with our house patty, but then we layer on top of that some really thinly sliced pastrami. Uh, you know, we got a layer of Swiss cheese on there, the sauerkraut with some, you know, toasted rye mixed in with it, and then a house-made Russian dressing. It's a, it's a favorite for a lot of people. Toasted rye. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. The Reuben Burger. Here we go. They're slicing the pastrami fresh in-house, and you can tell when you bite into the burger. That's special. <laughs> That's real good. Glad Here's you like up. it. Glad you like it. I love this bite so much. So I'm a big Reuben sandwich fan, and this is everything you want. The sauerkraut, the cheese, a little bit of pastrami that's freshly sliced in-house, but the burger itself is a really nice seasoned patty. These onion rings look over the top. What are these? So those are our Bloody Mary onion rings. So Bloody Mary onion rings. Not Bloody Mary burger, but that okay. burger. The Reuben burger. Looked so it good. <laughs> this is like Jurassic Park over here. 955, 83 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto. Lots happening. It's the 4th of July weekend, but tonight, Fiesta Noche del Rio is going to be taking place. Katie, what do we need to know? Get your tickets, fiestanotesa.com. All the proceeds benefit the children's charities right here in San Antonio. Your tickets, your concessions, brought to you by Prost House here on the Riverwalk. Uh, merchandise, um, cushion rentals, halos, all the fun stuff for a very, very patriotic weekend that we're so blessed to be a part of. And all for a good cause, so make sure you head on over to the Arneson River Theater. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Molds have more than tripled in 24 hours. They're high, past 8,000. Pigweed is present, but in low amounts. So not great to see a high pollen count during a holiday weekend. Not great to see high temperatures either, but it is July. It'll be 100 this afternoon. 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Take a look at the seven-day forecast. We are going to be seeing temperatures near 100 degrees just about every day over the next seven days, and that does include the entirety of this 4th of July weekend. All right, we'll be at 100 tomorrow, even less of a rain chance tomorrow and no rain chance on the 4th of July weekend, uh, 4th of July holiday itself, 101 for the high. And here's Oof. the thing, the grass, the ground, it's crunchy, it's brown. In spite of the fact that we got rain this past week, it's going to be a pretty dangerous situation out there. So if you are planning on joining fireworks, please make sure it's legal. Please, we, do, we don't want any kind of grass fires because of fireworks themselves. Yeah. Please be safe out there. Really quick before we go, mm -hmm. what are your hot dog toppings, your go-to topping? Oh, my goodness. Relish, mustard, and onions sometimes. Okay. Oh, I like that. It's like a ballpark dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Onion, yes. relish, ketchup. I think coleslaw and mustard. Texas Eats starts right what? now. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around the Lone Star State looking for great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for the iconic San Antonio Bakery to learn about Pan de Muerto. We had everything except customers when we first opened. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, get ready to place your orders. We're sharing some top spots to get tamales in the Alamo City. You started making all these tamales with only five pounds of masa, right? Yes. And we're off to the city of Hutto to try some famous pies and Southern cuisine. Our first stop on today's adventure is at a new French-American restaurant just north of San Antonio. Now we're here on the northwest side of San Antonio to check out a new French restaurant with a Texas twist. Let's go inside TARDIS.
Joining me now is executive chef and owner Jean Tardif. Thank you so much for having us out here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to your show. This thank food you. looks incredible. You're from Mexico. You yes. grew up there, but yes. you have like a French Mexican heritage. Talk to me a little bit about that experience. Exactly. Uh, I was born in Mexico. My father is French. My mother is Mexican. So I was born in Mexico and raised in Mexico until I had 12 years and then went to boarding school in France and then came back to Mexico and that's lived my life back and forward, back and forward until I, I study in France uh, French cuisine at the Cordon Bleu. And right in front of us though, you actually have some very traditional dishes, right? But your own yes. little take on it. Uh, yes, we have traditional uh, 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 dishes like the, the beef wellington. Yep. We have the dog magre. Uh, but here at the, with the carpaccio, I'm having my uh, Mexican culture, culture and family because the carpaccio is something that in Mexico we eat it a lot. It's like a ceviche, it's fresh. And we, obviously we have the lobster with some French vinaigrette. So this is a, a traditional rest, French restaurant, but we put like some Texas twists on it in some of the dishes. I want to try here. I'm going to start with the Wellington. Okay, let's do it. And I mean, this, the presentation alone is just over the top. I love the accents there on the puff pastry. Oh. <laughs> Is it? We have it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is a great presentation. How about it? Oh, wow. <laughs> Chef, that is one of the best bites I've had the entire year. Thank you. Thank you very much. This beef wellington is one of my favorite bites I've had the entire year. The puff pastry on the outside has just a nice crunchy texture. On the inside, the steak is super tender. The duck cell, all those mushrooms are super earthy, and it adds a really nice flavor as well as the prosciutto, adds that saltiness that you want. And you put that veal broth on top, it is just out of control fire. And I completely understand why they sell out of these things every day. To the carpaccio. This is the one. And he said it's very similar to like almost a ceviche. It's kind of like an homage yeah, back yeah, to that. Yeah, a tiradito, a ceviche. I mean, it's uh, uh, very, very fresh. Cheers. Chef grew up in Mexico and he's adding some of that Hispanic influence into his dishes here at the restaurant, including the carpaccio, which actually has more of a kind of like a ceviche vibe, but it has those fresh scallops in there, those U10s, gorgeous scallops, radishes, cilantro, a little bit of brightness on there with the acidity. These things just melt in your mouth. Now, lobster tails, uh, this is a really fun presentation. Uh, it's a potato puree, a little bit infused with garlic. Mm -hmm. um, and we have uh, two little lobster tails, or Canadian, Canadian tails. And there you're putting the candy lemon, that it puts that acidity with some that uh, sweetness on it. Wow. The lobster comes on a bed of potato puree, a little bit of herbs, some vinaigrette, and a candied lemon. You squeeze the lemon on top. It's a little sweet, a little acidic, but overall that lobster is super tender. You get some of the potatoes in there, and it is a great bite. The duck. The duck. Come on. I mean... Talk to me about what's going on here. Uh, duck. We have a great product here, too. It's, uh, it's a Canadian duck. It's a pan seared duck from a cold pan, so we can get that crispy uh, skin. And we serve it with uh, uh, caramelized onions and with a uh, green peppercorn sauce and poached pears. All right, also, Chef. Cheers here again. Cheers. That's the bite. Here's the duck. You have the carrots and the ginger puree on there, a poached pear, onions on the bottom, and a candied lemon. It sounds like a lot. You mix it all together, though. It is an incredible experience. It's like a journey through all these different flavors, all in one perfect bite. That's my favorite duck bite I've had. Thank I love the skin on the outside. Yeah, it's mm. crispy skin. <laughs> There's so many great things that you can get and try and explore when you're out here at Tardif's. Thank you so much for having us, thank Chef. You, thank you very much for being here. There you go. Cheers to you. Happy Cheers holidays. You. Happy holidays. Oh, and they also got cocktails and wine. Come on, that's a great <laughs> cocktail. Now, we're headed to the Alamo City for smoked steaks and Mexican cuisine from Monterrey. Now we're here in Castle Hills in San Antonio to go inside of a new restaurant that's serving up authentic Mexican food plus a massive smoked tomahawk. Let's go inside to Asador.
Joining me now is Jose Gonzalez. He is the co-owner and head chef out here at Tu Asador. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Right in front of us, we have all this delicious food, some of the top items on the menu, some cocktails as well. But how did all of this get started? So we started basically during COVID. Uh, we started from our house. We used to do carnes asadas every, every weekend. Uh, it was kind of like a family tradition. So carnes asadas has been in, in our blood for since I was born. All these recipes are so fun. I want to start right here. You have some really traditional appetizers on the menu, but this one, I mean, it's got to be the favorite, right? Oh, yeah. So this is our queso flameado. We do it a little bit different than most restaurants. Uh, we <laughs> like to mix in the chorizo with the cheese already. We had a little uh, uh, so Lady in the Tramp moment there little, going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get a little bit of everything yeah. all mixed up in every bite. If you love cheese, there's nothing better than queso flameado, right? Oh, yeah. That's just the way it is. Mm. The queso flameado is so creamy. The chorizo in there is that fatty flavor that you want. It's a little salty, super stretchy. If you want the cheese pool, that's the one to get. If you're going to come out here, I highly recommend starting with that. Now, cheese, wine, cocktails, you have a whole cocktail menu going on as well. And you have some family members helping you out here too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we got the whole family, basically. My mom's back in the kitchen with me. My sister's in the, one of my sisters in the bar. Are you the only boy? Yeah, I'm the only boy and the youngest, so it's like growing up with four moms. We're talking to the prince then right yeah. now, right there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> enchiladas, how is this prepared? So these enchiladas are uh, prepared the authentic way. It's basically a big dish that has got the oil in the middle. You get chile colorado and other seasonings and spices uh, to season the tortilla and rolled up with queso fresco inside, topped with white onion. We got some potatoes on the side that are seasoned with that same chile colorado mix. The chile torreado, can't miss that. The enchiladas, papas on the side, chile torreado as well. Cheers. Mm, cheers. Mm. That is really spicy. <laughs> oh yeah. Wow! These enchiladas are so fresh. The queso fresco in there mixed with that bite from those raw onions. You got the tortillas that have been cooked in the oil as well, so they're nice and tender. A little bit of the papas on the side, and then you have that little chili torreado as well. You take a bite out of that, get a little spice, you get everything mixed together. It is a great dish. So you have to have the queso flamiado to start, but you also have a fan favorite, the discada. Talk to me about how this dish is made. So discada is a very uh, regional dish from northern Mexico. It's usually made in uh, ranches. Uh, you get a lot of different meats together and it's kind of like a family event. But it's basically a mix of like five different meats, uh, a couple different vegetables, and they all cook at, at their own time, kind of one by one. And they all cook in its own juices and all the meats and flavors mixed together. You got the cheese in there as well. I'm gonna come in here and just, oh, God, look at that. This is the discada, cheers. cheers. And that's the bite. That's phenomenal. Give me some love. That is really good. Woo! You have a little bit of the pork flavor, a little bit of the beef, the chorizo, the sausage, and it has a little bit of that cheese on top as well. You load it up inside a tortilla, and it's a very shareable dish, and it is just bomb. If you're extra hungry, there's a big steak on the menu as well, the tomahawk steak. We do a, like a reverse sear almost. It's not so much cooking it in the smoker, if not, it's just there for a little bit to get the smoky flavor, and then we throw it on the grill to give it a very good sear and finish the cooking process let it rest for a couple minutes and slice it up. I want to get this guy in the middle right here. A perfect medium rare, almost I'll like a medium rare plus. Head. You have the garlic right here as well. Oh my gosh. The tomahawk steak is massive. It is delicious, smoked right here in house, grilled to perfection on the inside, and then it's sliced to order right there. You got the garlic on the side, the green onions, a little bit of that finishing salt as well. Tu Asador is a great restaurant here in the Castle Hills area. Steaks, authentic Mexican food, great cocktails, and great service out here as well. Give me some love, and you guys rock. I'm going back in on this steak. This is the spot though, especially for the holidays. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we go inside an iconic San Antonio bakery to learn about Pan de Muerto. We had everything except customers when we first opened. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.